All right, class. Um, so what I wanted to do uh, in this video is uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to make a quick tutorial for the calculator in Alex. Uh, there are a couple of buttons that we're going to be using uh, that are new. And just so that everybody's uh, really familiar uh, with how that works and and how to uh, deal with these kind of problems, um, we're going to uh, do one of these together. And I'll show you the ins and outs of this calculator, hopefully. So let's take a quick look at this problem. So first thing is uh, it's asking about, it says calcium levels in many people are normally distributed. Uh, that's important. Um, that means we can use the normal distribution, which means uh, the, the empirical rule applies and all of those awesome things. It has a mean. And so, and so the other thing is, is we're dealing with population level data here. Okay. So we don't have to use the standard error, uh, or other things like that. We can just use the standard deviation and stuff. So, <clears throat> uh, so it has a mean of 9.5 milligrams per deciliter, uh, and a standard deviation of 0 0.4 milligrams per deciliter, uh, individuals with calcium levels in the bottom 15% of the population are considered to have low calcium levels. So then it says find that calcium level that is the borderline between low uh, and those that are, are not considered low. And then it gives some instruction. Okay, so let's take a second and evaluate uh, what uh, this is asking us to do here. Let me make this a little bit smaller so that we can still see the problem here. Okay, so like I mentioned before, um, <clears throat> We, we can use uh, the, a normal distribution, okay, that means, which means the empirical rule applies. So I've got my normal distribution here. Um, the mean, right, I've centered the mean on 9.5, and then it tells us that we have a standard deviation of 0 0.4, which means, so if I move in this direction, you know, so here's one standard deviation, that's gonna be 9.9, .9, right? That's one standard deviation. Uh, and then I can also go this way. This is going to be 9.1. Uh, this would be minus one uh, standard deviations. <clears throat> right, so I can kind of look at this and I can kind of see, right, and I can put here's two standard deviations, three standard deviations, right, two standard deviations, three. And I can keep subtracting or adding uh, 0 0.4 to build out, the, you know, the locations of the rest of these standard deviations, okay? Um, right, so really, like, working with problems like this, uh, your knowledge of and being able to look at and interpret the, uh, the normal distribution is going to be really critical, okay? So, okay, so aside from thinking about what, right, where the standard deviations are and different things, so it says, um, it says that uh, individuals with calcium levels in the bottom 15% of the population, okay? So when you're, when, the other thing is, is when you're looking at a normal distribution like this, uh, this is showing you the entire population, right? If I color in all of the area underneath this curve, right? What that total area represents. So, right, 100% of the area, okay? That represents the, the whole population, okay? Total population, okay? That's really important, okay? Is that when you're looking at this thing, all of the area underneath is 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 100% of the area is the total population. Okay, so if I just grab all of this stuff back here, right, that would be 50% of the area or half the population, right? Or sometimes they talk about like the area under the normal curve as um, <clears throat> uh, as a proportion, right? So right, so this is 50% or a proportion of 0 0.5, right? Um, or half the population, right? Uh, all kinds of different ways of thinking about this and looking at this, okay? Now, so returning to our question, the question is asking, um, it wants to know, so individuals with calcium levels in the bottom, right? So when it says bottom, it's saying, hey, look, you're gonna be down here on this side on the left, talking about the bottom, so the bottom 15%, you know, so I'm just going to arbitrarily put a line on here. So that's somewhere over here. It wants to know, okay, so there's, here's your bottom 15%, okay? And so by the way, what does that make the rest of this? 
So if 15% are, if that's an abnormal calcium score, okay, then everything else up here, what percentage is that? Well, it's 85%, right? Because the total between the two areas has to be 100, okay? So anyways, we're interested in the 15%, and then what it wants to know is, is what is that, what is the cutoff line, okay? What is this value right here that splits the 15% and the 85%, okay? As we're just kind of like chewing on this problem and thinking about what it's asking and what's, go uh, what's going on here, it wants to know what is this value, okay? I know that one standard deviation or minus one standard deviations is 9.1. I know that the mean is 9.5. I know that plus one standard deviations is 9.9, .9, right? What's right here that, that marks off 15%, okay? So now to do that, this is where we go to the calculator because the calculator, there is a way, if you, if you watch some of my other videos, I show you how to use a table to do it and the table is in your book. So you can either use the table to do it or you can just use the calculator to do it. So now let me, let me show you kind of the different functions of the calculator. So here's our calculator. Uh, and <clears throat> so one of the buttons on our calculator is, um, you have this Z, and a box, okay? And essentially, uh, can I have both the calculator up and second? Nope. Oops, I don't want that calculator. Um, so look, okay, so the Z and the box, okay? Uh, what this button does is it says, hey, you put into here the proportion. You put in the proportion. Okay, and so these proportions, by the way, this is 0 0.15, and this proportion is 0 0.85. So, so you put in the proportion, and it will tell you the z-score that matches that proportion. So this gives the z-score. Okay, and that's what we want in this situation. We want the z-score because I can turn the z-score into a raw score. So anyways, tutorial on the... Uh, thing now now the way that it reads this proportion right so if here's my normal distribution okay whatever number I put in so let's say if I put in 0 0.85 into that box okay it always reads the area to the right so it's going to read 0 0.85 and it's going to give me z for that location equals some number okay if you put in if you put in 0 0.15 into that box, oh, that's the worst, it would give you this z-score. z equals, right, that number. But that's not what we want, right? Uh, so again, with this z button, it's always reading uh, area to the right, okay? Uh, and then it gives you the z-score that, that kind of marks that location. So for us, right, we're going to want to put in 0 0.85. So let's go to the calculator here. I'm going to go, okay, give me the z-score so that the proportion to the right is 0 0.85 equals. Okay. And so it tells me that that z-score is, and let me bring up, so the z-score for this problem I'm working on is negative uh, 1.0364, okay? That's z. Okay, now this is really important. Okay, so think about the distribution, right? Here's, the, so the mean is zero standard deviations. Here's plus one, plus two, minus one, minus two. So this is telling me uh, that our mark is, you know, right about here, just barely beyond minus one standard deviations. So, and, this, and so that matches my prediction, right? So I can come back over here to my picture and I can say, hey, look, that's in the right spot. That's about where I thought it was going to be. Uh, and so you always want to think about and kind of challenge and, 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 and wonder about, okay, like, is what I'm seeing right? So the calculator is telling me minus 1.0364, okay, is that z-score in a spot that makes sense to me, right, based on what's going on in the distribution? Uh, and it is. Um, so, awesome, okay? So that's how to use uh, the z button, okay? Oh, and so, by the way, to finish this problem, uh, so, 
so what our z score, so z equals um, uh, the score minus the mean over the standard deviation uh, is equal to z. And so for us, our z was negative 1.0364. Um, and so I could fill in the rest of the standard deviation. So let's see, the score I'm looking for is here minus the mean, so that's 9.5, divided by the standard deviation, 0 0.4, equals minus 1.0364, uh, and then just solve, right? Multiply each side by 0.4. Okay, so right, I can just do this because I've got the number right here. So I can go uh, this thing times 0 0.4 equals that number, and then add, 9.5 equals, boom, there you go. That uh, should be our answer here. Uh, 9.1, it just wants it to the one decimal place. Check, correct, hooray! Okay, right, awesome, we got it right. So that's how to do those problems and a little bit on how to use uh, this function of the calculator. Uh, okay, so so that so the z score function of the calculator really important. Okay, so now the other function of the calculator. This is kind of like the opposite of 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 that. Okay, so let's clear this out. Let me bring back up my. Uh, okay, so our first button. So we have z with a little box. Okay, so the way this works, you put the proportion in. So proportion goes here. So for example, here's the z score. And if I knew that this proportion is uh, 0 0.8, right, that's that area. So that's what would go into here. And then out comes the z-score that matches that proportion. Okay, so this z-score, right, that, that marks this line that matches. Okay, so that's how the, the, the z button works. The other button that we have here is called P z less than or equal to box. Okay, so that's the other button that we're going to be using. This one. Okay, and essentially this is the opposite. So in this case, I mean, so if we're thinking about this in terms of it just being the opposite, right? So here's the the normal distribution. Let's say I have some z score. Let's say this is 1.2. Okay, what this is going to tell you is this. So the way you can read this is this is telling us the proportion uh, if the z, uh, of 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 the z score that is less than or equal to um, whatever that I put in there, okay. So n notice that, that it's the less than sign. So it's going to give me all of this area, okay. This button, the z button, looks for the area on the right. This button, uh, it, it give it gives you the area on the left. Okay, so let's try this out. So if I put in, if I put in 1.2 into here, okay, so that's, I'm telling it, I want to know what is, oh shoot, could you not see any of that stuff I drew? I can't remember. Uh, so I drew a bunch of stuff, hopefully. Um, anyway, so looking at, here's your Z button, you put in the proportion, uh, 0 0.8, it gives you the Z score out. Okay, over here, we're looking at <clears throat> what is the proportion of the area to the left of a given z score. Okay. And so if I want to know, if I put in 1.2 into this, it's I mean I'm I'm essentially asking it to tell me what is the proportion that's to the left here. Okay. So uh, let's hit enter on our calculator. Um, and so it's telling me that this proportion is uh, uh, 0 0.885. Okay. That's, but what if, so so that's how that button on the calculator works, okay? Um, <clears throat> I could put in a different value, right? I could put in negative 2.2, right? Because here's zero. Uh, so this would be negative 2.2 and it would give me this little area. So if I put in, so if I use this button again, so no, uh, so if I put in this button again and let's see, I want it negative 2.2. Um, and it should give me a teeny tiny uh, proportion. So this proportion is 0 0.0139, okay? So that's this area, okay? Um, let's say in this case, 
I have this little area that's like uh, like almost one and a half percent, right? This is like 1.4 percent. Okay. Well, if what if I needed the part on the right, if I needed all of this stuff, well, I can just take this answer. Uh, you know, minus uh, what? Hold up. Okay, proportion negative 2.2 .2 equals, okay, so there's that thing. And so if I just do minus one, now the, my, my answer is gonna end up being negative, but it's essentially gonna give me the other proportion. So this is telling me that the yellow here, all the rest of this is uh, 0 0.986. That's the proportion, or it's 98.6% of <clears throat> the distribution, okay? So that's how those two buttons on the calculator work. You can use a table, but, but these buttons on the calculator are so awesome. They do all the work for you. You don't have to go looking around at a table. Uh, but it is, you do kind of need to know how it works and, and what it's telling you. So again, this button here, it, tells you the proportion of the area to the left of whatever z-score you put in, okay? So the z-scores have to match across the distribution. This button here, uh, you get the z-score, and again, it's reading the area to the right. So this it's kind of stupid that one look, gives you area to the left and the other one reads area uh, from the right, but that's just how they programmed it. Um, so here, you, you put in the area to the right, and then it gives you the corresponding z-score, okay? And so just think about like what you should get, right? If, you're, if you put in 0.5, you'd get a z-score of zero, because that would be, right? So if I go, if I, not that. So if I do this, and I say, hey, 0.5, that's right in the middle, so the z-score of that is gonna be zero, okay? So any proportion, uh, um, any proportion that you put in here that's bigger than 0.5, right? If you make this area larger than 0.5, it's gonna give you a negative z-score. If you put in a proportion that's smaller than uh, 0.5, uh, it's gonna give you a positive z-score, right? So just all, all these kinds of things that you can kind of think about and wonder about as you're working on stuff like this. Um, so that's it for this tutorial. A, a quick look at how to use the calculator. Uh, uh, let me know if y'all have any other questions and good luck this week. Thanks, bye.